For those of you used to the older versions of AutoCAD where the command line is actually locked to the bottom of the AutoCAD screen, you'll see the command line down here at the bottom of the screen now is movable. Click on the little grey area there on the left and drag and you'll see the screen update. So as I move now, I can park the screen wherever I want to. You'll notice as well it is transparent. You can set these transparency settings in here where you customize it. So you've got input settings, so you've got auto complete, auto correct, search, mid string, and so on. These settings are very different to the older command line that we used to have. Lines of prompt history, if I click on that, I can change the amount and notice it comes up on the command line, which is very clever. I'll leave that at three and just press enter there. I'll click on the little spanner again now. Input search options. If I click on that, I can go in and set all of my search options for the command line. I've got autocorrect on and off, remember corrections, list delay time, 300 milliseconds, everything. I can set everything I want alphabetically, frequency. It's quite an incredible setup now, and it's been thought about in depth by Autodesk to make the command line a very valid tool while you're using AutoCAD. You would have thought by now with things like touch screens, iPads, tablets, and so on, we wouldn't need something like the command line where we actually have to put text and numerical input in. We still have to use it though. When we're using certain commands in AutoCAD, we still have to type variables. We still have to type numbers of objects, for example. So that is how you set your search options. I'll just click on cancel there so I don't change any settings. I'll go back to the little spanner again now. Transparency, if I click here, my transparency options. So at the moment, how transparent should the command line be? I've got 70% opacity, which is the default setting. So basically that's taken me from 100% opacity, which is solid, towards the clear setting here. So I'm 30% transparent, which is more than adequate most of the time. How transparent should the command line be on mouse over? Now what happens here is you can set it that when you roll your mouse over the command line, it will be, in my case, solid, because the slider bar, as you can see, is right at the end. To move the slider, just click and drag, and I always leave that at 100% opacity, and I'm going to OK that and show you why. Because then, when I hover over the command line like that, you can see that it goes solid so that I can click there and perhaps type in something like the line command and press enter. And as soon as I do that, it'll obviously kick in with the line command and ask me to specify the first point like so. I'll just hit escape there to cancel that. Those settings are just on that little spanner icon there. So I can go in and set all those settings. Again, just to lose that menu, just hit escape on the keyboard and it goes. Now docking it is just as easy as undocking it. I click on the little grey sort of speckled area there and drag. And as I come down, you'll see it lock on there. That locks it to the status bar at the bottom of the screen. If I click and drag a bit further, though, you'll see the ghost image appear when I come down towards the bottom of the screen. There it is there. If I get it there and release, it just automatically docks it at the bottom of the screen to fit the bottom of the drawing area. So you can see there that the command line is extremely useful now. It used to just be this line of text locked at the bottom of the AutoCAD screen. It's now much, much more sophisticated. Something else you can do as well. Let me just go to the line command. If I click here and come into the drawing area, it asks me to specify the first point of my line. So if I click here now, like so, and drag my line across, you'll notice when I click, I'm getting the commands on the command line there. So I've drawn my first line segment. But now I can come down to the line command itself here on the command line. If I click on undo there, the undo actually works. So I can actually click on the sub option settings in the command on the command line. That's been a new feature in the last few versions of AutoCAD. It's extremely useful, saves you having to right click to go to the shortcut menu, saves you having to type, in this case, U for undo and press enter. I'll just press escape there to cancel the line command. So the command line, again, a very, very useful piece of kit in your AutoCAD toolbox. So let's now look at the status bar in AutoCAD. Again, I've set up a drawing in our demo project, statusbar.dwg. So when you're looking at the work files for this particular video title, you look for the status bar drawing, and that'll be located in demo project. 
So let's have a look now at the status bar. Where is it on the AutoCAD screen? It's down at the bottom of the screen. Now, as you're working in the drawing area, if I move the crosshair or the cursor around, you can see it moving on the screen there. Notice the coordinate readout bottom left corner of the screen. That is part of your status bar, and it tells you the X and Y coordinates of the location of the cursor. Now, if we were working in 3D, creating a 3D structure or a 3D object, those coordinates are much, much more important. In AutoCAD Electrical, we're going to be creating 2D schematics of components, panels, and so on. So we won't really need to worry too much about our coordinate readouts. However, sometimes they may come into play to locate a certain circuit board, a certain master switch board, or a junction box, for example. It depends on the environment in which you're working. Moving along the status bar now to the right, you'll notice all of these icons along the bottom here. Now these icons are your drafting settings and they're one of the most fundamental tools within all versions of AutoCAD. They allow you to switch things on and off at any time. So I can be drawing away in my drawing here. I might zoom in on a certain area like so, and I might want to draw some lines. Now I want the lines to snap exactly, say, from that corner there to that corner there. So I have to make sure that my object snaps are switched on. So I come down here, down here like this, there's object snaps. I don't want 3D object snaps, it's that one there. Now you'll notice how these icons are very similar to each other. There's another setting for these drafting settings that I'll show you in a moment that will make your life a lot easier. I'll switch object snap on. There's my drafting settings. It prompts me which object snaps do I want to switch on. So I'll switch on endpoint, midpoint and center and also intersection and extension. Now I will cover these object snaps in more detail later on in the course. So don't worry too much about them right now. Endpoint is the one I actually need, but I'll OK those that I've switched on. Up to the draw panel here on the ribbon, I click on the line command. Now when I hover, there's my endpoint snap. So I'm snapping exactly to those corners and then I press enter to confirm the line command like so, job done. Now I've drawn that line exactly. What would happen if I tried to do that without the object snaps on? So let's come down here, switch object snaps off and try and draw that line again. I'll go on the other side and I'll try and draw from there to there and I'll press enter. Now if I zoom in real close, that line doesn't touch that corner. And if I pan and zoom in there, that line doesn't touch that corner. So I'm completely inaccurate. So that line is useless. So I'll select it, hit the delete key, and I'll delete it. But you see what I mean? Those object snaps are extremely important. They're fundamental for the accuracy of your drawings. Let's lose that line there as well. That can go. I'll just delete that one too. And I'll zoom out again, and I'm back in my panel drawing like so. So those settings for the drafting settings are great, but when you look at those icons, if you're a new user especially, you don't quite know what they mean. So if you move over any of the buttons, the icon buttons, and right click, a shortcut menu appears. Now I've right clicked over the object snaps, so there's all my object snaps there. I can switch them on and off there as well. But if I just click on this use icon setting, it turns all of the icon buttons into buttons with letters on. Now this is the old classic setting, and I actually prefer this both as an instructor and as a user because it tells me exactly what those buttons do. O snap is object snaps, it's easy. And when I switch it on, you can see they're on the command line, it tells me that O snap is on. If I click on it again, it tells me that O snap is off. So those are your drafting settings, and we will cover those in a little bit more detail later on. Let's move along now. Notice we have a model button. And we also have here our model button again. Now this model button here switches us between model space or what is known as paper space, the layout tabs. So if I click on model, you'll notice the environment changes. It takes me into the AutoCAD layout space, which is where I would normally plot my drawings. If I click on the paper button again, you'll notice it takes me into the model space, but looking through what they call a viewport. How do I get back out of this layout space? Well, I move outside the viewport and just double click to deactivate that first. I don't want that activated. What I can do is I can come down here. If I click on this button here, it takes me back to the model. 
like so. That's my model button. And here I've got my layout button. Takes me back to the layout again. So there's model and there's layout. Now you can also switch on little tabs that appear here. But also there's a new feature now in newer versions of AutoCAD. The drawing tab is up here. If I hover over it, you can see there's layout and model there as well. Just go slightly off the screen there due to my screen resolution, but don't worry. I can just hover over model there and click takes me into the model space. If I hover over the status bar again, hover over the layout and click, takes me into the layout space. The nice thing about that is if I hover over that tab, model is always there and any layouts that I've got set up are always there. Very useful to move around in the drawing. I've also got down here on the status bar, quick view layouts, which is somewhat similar. There's my model, there's my layout, and I can close it there. If I've got multiple drawings, Hover there, I've got one drawing open called status bar. Hover there, there's the model, there's the layout. Again, I can close that by clicking on the cross there. There are some other settings moving along here which involve annotative scaling and also workspaces. We'll look at these in more detail as we work through the course. When working with AutoCAD and any other flavor of AutoCAD, in this case AutoCAD Electrical, you need to be aware of your DWG file types. AutoCAD saves as a native DWG file, in the same way that Word saves as a DOC or a DOCX file. So you need to be careful which version of the DWG file you are saving and ultimately may be sending to your client, to your contractor, and so on. You need to be careful of this because different versions of AutoCAD use different DWG file types. In the version of AutoCAD that we're using, if I do a save as, you'll see that we're using a 2013 DWG file type. So I'll go up to save as, and you'll see down here, files of type, there's my AutoCAD 2013 drawing DWG file type. I can save to lots of different DWG file types, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this dialog up the screen. You'll see why in a moment, because when I click on files of type here, you can see that there's lots of different file types. I can save all the way back to AutoCAD release 14 if I want to. Now what you'll find most of the time, the only distance you'll have to go back is to there, to 2010, maybe, 2007. It depends on what version of the software your client, your contractor is using. To be on the safe side though, what I tend to do is set my DWG file type to the previous type each time I work. So in this case, instead of saving to 2013, what I might do is tell AutoCAD Electrical by default to always save to 2010. So how do you do that? Well, let's get out of this dialog box and cancel this first of all. What we need to do is just put our crosshair in the center of the screen, right click on the mouse, and go to the options setting here on the shortcut menu. When you click on options, you get a rather large dialog box appear. Don't worry, don't be intimidated by it. It's just all of your AutoCAD settings. If we go to the open and save tab, there's the file save option on the left. Change that to 2010, like so. Click on apply. Click on OK, and now every time I do a Save As, so I click on Save As again now, you'll see it's a 2010 instead. What that means is you're saving back to the previous DWG file type. That's important because someone might have a version of the software that cannot read the 2013 DWG file type. It might be an older version. The good thing about 2013, for example, is it will read all the older ones below it. But if you go the other way, older versions of AutoCAD can't read newer DWG file types. So get into that habit of maybe setting it back one step. So I've gone back to the 2010 file type, even though my default is a 2013 DWG file type.